Shalom. Uh, my name is Michael Decker, and I'm a lawyer within the law offices of Decker, Pex, Rafir, and Co. Um, here with me is Yonatan Gavrielov. He Hi. is um, a researcher in our firm that researches uh, genealogy and the history of the Jewish people. Why do we need this? Because of our work in international uh, immigration and assisting uh, uh, mainly Jewish people in obtaining additional passports, because most of the Jewish people uh, a generation or so uh, ago, sometimes a bit more, came from different countries, and many of these countries have um, immigration laws that allow descendants to immigrate to those countries and to obtain passports. Um, today, in our uh, specific work in immigration to Israel, or what we call Aliyah, uh, I wanted to touch a special uh, point, a specific point, regarding Aliyah for people with criminal backgrounds. Um, there's a famous saying uh, about, um, about the Jewish people that uh, basically says that once there will be a, um, a Jewish robber, a Jewish prostitute, and a Jewish murderer, then Israel can proudly claim that it is a country again. Just like any other people group in the world that has all types of uh, uh, people within the nation. Um, so even the Jewish people, from what I understand, have a history of crime like any other people. So uh, Jonathan will explain a little bit about this. I'll ask him specific questions. Uh, so Jonathan, I understand that there were even Jewish pirates that existed after the expulsion of the Jews from from Spain. Uh, do you, can you mention any names and the reason they became pirates? Yeah, for example, there was uh, Shmuel Palagi and uh, the Admiral uh, Rice, who it's actually their uh, pirating uh, purposes was uh, an act of uh, revenge against the uh, Spanish monarchy who expelled all the Jews from Spain. And yes, they actually uh, had like a vision, uh, get revenge through uh, looting their uh, ships. Wow. Yeah. No kidding. So basically what you're saying is that like countries that uh, um, absorb these Jewish refugees from, from the Spanish Empire uh, use the, these Sephardic Jews in order to, to um, attack uh, the Spanish Empire, uh, using the feelings of revenge that the Sephardic Jews had. That's very uh, fascinating. Um, I wanted to touch another time in history. We know that mo uh, after the, st the State of Israel, most of the Jews are living in the United States. And we know that the United States was a country that absorbed many, many immigrants from different countries and different people groups. So we know that there was a famous Italian mafia, there was an Irish mafia, what about the Jews? Do they also um, have a history of uh, uh, organized crime and mafia in the United States? So, absolutely, yes. Uh, actually, uh, the Jews uh, uh, composed the second largest uh, mafia in the U.S. in the late 19th century and during the beginning of the uh, 20th century. It uh, started with uh, Arnold Watchstein, who whose name uh, or nickname was the father of the organized crime in the, in the US. Like the brain? Yeah, exactly the brain. Wow. Okay. And this brain, this man was the uh, tutor of uh, greatest uh, criminals like uh, Mir Lansky, Bagzi Segal, uh, Costello and uh, uh, Lucky Luciano. And there, there were others uh, very uh, uh, who had a re high reputation, like uh, Federica Mandelbaum, uh, the brothers Amberg, uh, Louis Buchan. Was Federica a girl? No. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, it, it, she was a very uh, infamous uh, uh, figure in the US, in, in New York, and uh, her, uh, her background was. Uh, uh, Criminal fans. It's like uh, it's like uh, a stealing and selling it. 
to wow. uh, if they yes, uh, resell it and uh, yes. It's very interesting history, uh, Jonathan. Um, uh, because we're short in time, we will um, just summarize uh, on the legal level that uh, May Lansky, for example, uh, submitted actually a Supreme Court petition here in Israel. And it's one of the most famous petitions on the law of return. And in this petition, the judges basically determined the rules for uh, allowing uh, someone to make a liyah or refusing his application if he has a criminal record. So for example, someone could have been convicted of a crime but still be allowed a liyah on the one hand. And on the other hand, he could have not been convicted because on the criminal level there wasn't enough evidence, but on the administrative level there is enough evidence to deny his liyah application because today he would be a threat to the public. But, for example, if he was convicted a long time ago, but today is not a threat to the public, his application could be approved. So the tests for being convicted on the criminal level and being allowed immigration are different tests on the legal level. Um, anyway, if this is of any interest to you, uh, you uh, our office has much experience with representing uh, Jews that were denied Aliyah for uh, criminal backgrounds and you can feel free to contact us and we'll be happy to assist you um, and answer any question you might have. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.